Hello, Akiti. In the last video, we talked about the final stage of the comic book creation process. Book design and book layout is the part I don't enjoy very much. I want to get it over with as soon as possible. Because the thought of starting a new story is much more attractive than measuring bleeds and margins. We also talked about the two types of cray-cray thinking, one bad and one good. The bad kind makes us act like a control freak or a petty child, while the good kind, the one we do when we are asleep and dreaming, makes us examine our minds more closely, and sometimes it can even give us an idea for a new story. Now, before we end this series, let me share you an excerpt from the original written story of this big book project. You see, Kitty, before I mapped out the comic book panels, I wrote the entire story as a standalone prose, using visual language so anyone can enjoy it even without seeing my sketches. Let's listen to this portion of the prose. The Wolf and the Boy Little Wolf lost her sense of direction and walked with her shadow for days without food. Then she came across a paved road where she encountered a boy. The boy saw that the wolf was in a bad way. He offered her some food from his bag. The boy reached out some jerky and nodded. You look lost, the boy said. Little wolf looked into the boy's eyes and imagined what it would be like to be him right now. I can help you, the boy said. Little wolf and the boy stared at each other for a minute. I can help you, if you would let me. The boy laid the food on the ground. Little wolf followed the boy to his home as signs of fall was arriving. The boy had more food and water at home, but little wolf was kept in a box outside the house. The box was fenced in an area. There were other boxes, but all were empty. Little Wolf watched the boy and his father step out of the house. The father with a shotgun and the boy with a knife. The boy crouched down to Little Wolf from behind the fence and they locked eyes for a minute. Her eyes are just like Gizmos. Mm, keep a safe distance, the father told the boy. She's no pet. Little Wolf watched as the two walked away and drove off. The sky was red when Little Wolf heard a truck engine. The strong smell of big game was approaching. Little Wolf watched as the father and the boy took it in the shed and prepared the meat. The boy stepped out with a dish and slipped it through an opening in the fence. Liver, the boy looked at Little Wolf. You'll feel stronger in the morning. Now here is that part translated visually in our big book. A lot of the words I used in the prose were describing the scene, so they don't need to appear on the illustrations unless we're trying to emphasize a point. When we draw comic book panels, we try to do it in a manner that is easy to follow for anyone, anybody including someone who hasn't yet learned how to read. I think this is why comic books have a reputation for being low quality or not treated with the same prestige as a novel, because it's a storytelling medium that does not exclude illiterates. But the very reason that comic books can be read or understood by illiterates is actually how I learned to value them. I think every kid is a visual thinker, but some more so than others. When I was little, reading wasn't an easy skill to learn. I found it too abstract. Comic books became the gateway for me to learn how to read. The illustrations in the panels show us what is going on, like we're watching a silent film. Only the pictures don't move. What we find moving instead is our eyes from left to right, top to bottom. Some of my favorite comic books are wordless, but the unforgettable ones combine drawn panels that visually tell the story, juxtaposed with words 
that add more meaning to what's going on. Writers always advise show, don't tell, because the prose that shows is more interesting to read. In comic books, this should be much easier to achieve. The panel illustrations have no other purpose than to show what's going on. The trick is to complement it with words that serve as a bridge connecting one panel to the next. But most of the time, the words we carry over from our written prose to our illustrated panels will be minimal because we let the pictures do most of the talking. All right, that's all for now. I'll talk to you later.